Okay, so that's our first strip. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my strip from earlier. I'm just gonna lie them down next to each other. I'm just gonna feel how they are. If they're the same size or not, or the same thickness. Now the strip that I just milled, I can feel that it's just slightly thinner than this one. So I'm gonna look at this strip and see how good the, the cove was on it. And what I can see is that the, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but I can see that the, the edge of the strip yeah, probably not. Uh, it is, this strip is slightly thicker, so we'll probably be okay with this thickness. When we go to put the the bead and cove on, basically what we want is a nice uh, uniform uh, bead on the one side and cove on the other side. And what happens is where the, especially on the cove side, you can make your strip too thin and then when the cove goes in, it's very fragile. And uh, you can even, because of the cutting with the grain, um, when you're creating the strip, you can get fraying of the strip. And uh, now this, it doesn't, it's not gonna affect a whole lot in the boat building, but it's just one, one more thing that you're gonna be playing with and dealing with as you go so really getting the best strips possible um, right from the start is uh, is what you want to do um, so I'm just going to compare one more time and uh, you know if I wanted to I could uh, take my depth gauge and see what the difference is with that All right so you know you could you could use a caliper um, you know or a uh, just a, a little gauge like this, right? and I can just push down and, and see. So really we're talking about, uh, the difference is about a 64th, so uh, um, it's not really, I don't think it's really going to affect the strip, so I'd say this is pretty good to go. Uh, if I wanted to, I could just adjust my fence a little bit and widen it up a bit, uh, but I think that if we stick with this as a consistent size, then uh, everything will turn out fine. Okay, so that's uh, one strip. Now, because I'm using about 10 and 12 foot boards, I probably only have another 200 to go. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna save you the boredom of watching me rip 12 foot cedar boards and when I'm done, we'll just get back to it and I'll show you how I add the bead in the cove. Um, one thing I also like to say is that uh, I, I work alone and uh, so I'll set up, uh, you know, jigs and uh, stands and, uh, you know, other devices to help me uh, stabilize my wood. But if ever there was a time you wanted to call a friend or, you know, relative, uh, you know, wife or uh, if you have any older children, you know, teenagers, uh, now would be the time because having one person on each side of the board is going to make life a lot easier. Um, another thing you can do when uh, ripping your boards is if you have a sawhorse, uh, just set the sawhorse behind you, uh, so on the feeding side of the table saw, so that when you lift your board up to get it into position, you don't have to, you know, really play with the balance of the, the, the board before feeding it into the blade. Um, the, you know, you can lift it up and just rest one end on the table saw and have about uh, halfway down or three quarters way down uh, the board, uh, have the, the saw horse to support it. Uh, word of advice as well, when, when and if you do have someone help you uh, mill your strips, uh, it's very important that the person on the receiving end uh, that they don't pull on the wood so so make sure that you tell them that right away 
uh, the person feeding the wood into the saw or into the router, uh, you're the person that's in charge. So the person on the receiving end, what their job would be is to simply support the wood as it's coming off. Uh, while you're milling, they would uh, separate the strip from the board just a little bit, right? So, so the best way to do it would be to just uh, as the, the strip is coming through the, the saw blade, all they would do is just pull it over slightly. They don't need to touch the the, the plank of wood that's going through, um, but just, just separate it slightly so that they come off nice and even. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, you know, and, and mainly that's uh, for a safety uh, concern again. Uh, if you think about it, you're you're going to be the person who's uh, facing the teeth of the the saw, um, so you really don't want someone pulling the board uh, quickly and uh, you getting cut. So since you're the one on the controlling side, you deal with the pace of the board, and uh, and you just make sure that your partner understands that. All right, so hopefully you're enjoying this video. Um, uh, you can uh, check out some of the, the boats that I've built at woodenboat.com, um, and that's a uh, wooden uh, hyphen boat.com. Uh, built built a few. I don't uh, I I don't build in high production. I build a couple boats a year, and uh, then sell them. Uh, you know, it's a it, it's a very enjoyable pastime, and if you're looking at getting involved in boat building, uh, I guess the my main advice would be to uh, uh, to seriously consider whether you want to put out the the financial outlay. It does require a considerable amount of equipment. Um, uh, really, we're we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, it depends. Really, it depends on how far into it you want to go. If you're going to be uh, milling your own wood or not, if it's going to be a one-off boat, or if you plan on on doing several. Uh, if if you plan on doing a one-off boat, then then certainly you should uh, you should buy your strips and uh, the material that you need instead of uh, putting the investment into a, you know a table saw and and whatnot. But if you already have a small shop set up. Uh, really, it's it's a it's a very enjoyable process. Uh, the uh, you, you can expect a crowd to come and uh, not all at once, but you can expect people to come and check out your boat. Once people hear about it in the neighborhood, you'll be surprised how many neighbors come and and see how far you've gone on it. Uh, uh, most common. Uh, comments is that people wouldn't have the patience for it or that it seems like it's very tedious and at times it is at times it is uh, very much like watching glue dry but uh, the, the other comments are uh, you know how, how skilled of a woodworker you are and how beautiful the the boat is and so it's very rewarding and uh, I, you know I, I highly recommend it um, if, if you're so inclined it does require a fair amount of technical skill if you don't feel like you would have the skill to uh, to renovate a bedroom uh, I would recommend you do not attempt uh, building a, a cedar strip boat uh, simply because we are talking about a, a somewhat a serious investment uh, it, it is going to cost you um, upwards of a thousand or or two thousand dollars to build it um, plus a lot of your time, so if you, if you don't have the skill to do it, uh, the the mistake that you make could be quite costly. Uh, but but if you feel like you're rel relatively handy and familiar around basic tools, um, if you have patience and you're willing to do the measure twice, cut once, and uh, sit back and and think over what you're doing and not just rush into it then then you should be able to to handle building a cedar strip boat uh, so yeah so you can check out my my website woodenboat.com and uh, yeah tell me what you think